In real life, that fish looks like literally like a, like a painting. This is one of our Eureka Red breeders. Only seven people have them that we sold them to. You can see that one starting to, to get more prominent. We actually have three different types of Bozmani growing up. Millennium rainbows. We've probably got 30 types of rainbows. These are going to be our breeders here. Only a few people in the U.S. have this fish. We come from a big river system. It's a big fish. He doesn't like uh, people being around the, the tank. <laughs> Great fish for, for African tanks. See how close he lets us get. Oh, I, see him. I really enjoy and feel like it's a privilege to be able to do this, you know, for a living. I love it. I'm out here today in Imperial Tropicals with Mike Drowdy. You guys may know them for their African cichlids, but they got a lot more. So we're heading into the greenhouse one you said this is? Yeah, this is um, the one of the breeding rooms and the fire rooms. Um, I don't know if you just, man, you can feel that heat rolling out. <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah, it's pocket up my yeah. glasses. This is the greenhouse number one. This is where we, uh, we keep some of the um, African cichlids that we breed and a lot of the fry are kept in this room. It's very hot in here, so. <laughs> so be ready. <laughs> All right. Let's take a look, man. Woo. All right. So um, we'll net out some fish. Uh, we'll do um, <clears throat> we'll do some um, a fish that is pretty new to the hobby right now because um, only seven people have them that we sold them to. But it's an albino Turkish peacock, and um, this is uh, some of the adults right here. And you can see that beautiful fish right there. Gorgeous. Oh yeah, it's beautiful. You can see the blue, blue on the face right there. Um, beautiful fish. We uh, we started breeding the Turkish about two years ago, and we started getting a few albinos from them, and we sorted them out. I have a thing for albino fish. I really like them. I've, I've got a lot of different albino fish that we work on, like the albino red empress is another one that's. One of my favorite. That's the strain that you developed here in house at Imperial Tropicals. You yes. Developed that strain. The albino Turkish, yes. That's the one. Yeah, yeah. Um, the Turkish peacock is not a very common one to start with. And then um, I have yet to see anybody with albinos yet. So we were kind of excited to, to start getting some of those. These are some albino plane backs. This is a uh, Victorian cichlid that we're working on. And you can see. I see why they call it the flame bag. Oh, yeah. yeah. Uh, so we have a, a Nairii strain that we breed also, which is very similar to this, except those aren't albino. Uh, Madoka White Lips. This is another one that is um, really, really popular for all male peacock tanks. Uh, let's see. These are some young breeders. And... See this guy right here. Wow. They got some, some big white lips, and when they get bigger, those lips become more prominent. Like you can see that one starting to, to get more prominent on that one. Uh, How big do those get usually? The biggest, uh, we've my original male, which I'll show you in a, another room when we go to, because I have him in an aquarium. We just kind of you know retired him because he was getting kind of a, a hump on his back from this old age, but he's probably about eight inches, you know? A lot of new projects in here. Um, so this is the um, Traversi right here. This is a Mabuna that is really, really nice. Uh, you guys breed in Bunas in-house? You breed hats and peacocks also? Yes. Mm -hmm. okay. And most of your breeding is to take place, I know we'll maybe take a look at some ponds later, footage but most of your breeding do you do it out in the ponds or do you do it here or indoors indoors yeah okay. they um they don't do as well breeding in the ponds some types do take off like the victorian cichlids some of those guys breed like rabbits in the ponds but the mabunos don't do very well and the peacocks will breed out there but you just don't get that uh many uh, survival because the other fish eating the fry so you might have you know your first generation a lot of babies growing up and then as they continue to breed, the other fish are, are catching the baby. So, it's so the ponds are mostly just grow out then? Mostly growing out on the Africans, yes. Um, what is this, a Traverse? Traverse, yeah. Wow. Really nice fish. 
and I've been working with dirt. So when people look at my hands, <laughs> they're dirty. We were out there uh, redoing some of the farm before uh, the uh, rainy season gets here. Okay. So. I, I follow your YouTube channel a little bit. For those of you guys watching, Mike and Imperial Tropicals has a YouTube channel. Well, he has a personal one too. So yeah. We'll talk about the Imperial Tropical ones. I know you live here on property too, right? Yes, yes. You're always kind of doing stuff. I know you built a pool, but you're always working on fish stuff, home stuff. It's kind of just like blended together. It's all blended together. <laughs> it's one big, uh, one big family. So uh, yeah, I live right in the middle of the property, and you know I'm. You know, fish is, you know, what I love, you know, I really enjoy and feel like it's a privilege to be able to do this, you know, for a living. I love it. So, um, some flavicent, these, um, this is a new strain of flavicent that we started breeding because the old strain, I actually never took them to market because I was not real happy with the strain. They did not have um, real distinct markings on the males that I really looked for. So. You know, when we get a new strain of fish, um, it takes us a long time to, to breed them, get them up to size, and then sometimes we're not happy with the, the quality, you know? So we'll, we'll actually not take those to market and until we find um, a better strain. And we do bring in uh, quite a few wild stock, you know? Um, Like you can see this smell, he's got you know, a lot of a lot of nice potential starting to yeah. get a lot of yellow on the side, but really nice fish. And talk to me up here. You so this is your beginning stages. You collect some of the fry and you stick them in some of these little yes. styrofoam yes. containers for the yeah. first uh, first little bit. First couple of days, they'll be in the uh, in the box here. Um, the albino fish actually never go to the pond. Uh, they no, they never do well in a pond. So a lot of the albino fish are growing up inside. These look like some albinos that she pulled. Um, yes, actually, no, this is the flavicent. Uh, they're just light colored. So we'll collect the fry here and then I'll have another staging area when they leave here. They're only here for a couple of days and until they absorb their egg, egg sac and then they go to another grow out. And then with these, um, these on the back here, this for keep from jumping or what's um, with these? Uh... For jumping. Um, Sometimes the uh, sunlight gets really intense in some areas and we'll start getting a lot of algae. Uh, the mabunas like it, they'll eat it, but the peacocks, it'll start growing filamentous algae. So we'll, we'll kind of move these around um, because of that. We have shade cloth on the building, but if you um, allow just full sun, then it's going to uh, allow too much sunlight in the building and you're going to get um, negative effects from the, from the algae. So uh, this is one of our Eureka Red breeders here. It's stunning. I don't know how well he'll show on camera, but in real life, he's glowing. <laughs> he really <laughs> he's is, man. Glowing. Some of these fish are, they look like, they look fake. They look yeah. like in real life, I don't know how it's gonna come up on camera, but in real life, they look like marbly glass, like fake. Yeah. So perfect. Yeah. Almost. No, it's like um, saltwater type colors. Uh, we got quite a few empties down here. We do have some uh, Chelosi bees right here. These guys are showing some good color. We're starting to breed more, um, more mabunas because just everybody's asking us to. Uh, so I think in the, the next six months, you'll see a lot of new types of mabunas coming out from us. Um, also on the peacocks and haps, like we're just continuing to expand in these in these groups because uh, they're so colorful, like we were talking about. You know, there's a nice, nice male starting to get some really good color. Now, just, have you guys always been African cichlids for forever? Or? Um, so we've been breeding African cichlids, um, I would say in the early 80s. Um, we started breeding the, uh, you know, ones that are kind of common now, like Venustu, Sokolophi, Red Zebra, Yellow Labs, Chipot Chipotes, uh, Living Sonai. There's probably about 15 or 20 types that we bred. And, you know, I was young. I was in fact i wasn't even involved in the fish back then um, i didn't really get i mean i had duties and stuff and and i helped take care of the fish but i never knew that there were so many different um, varieties of african cichlids and 
really until I got back into the hobby when I got out of the military in 2002. I said, I want to learn everything that I can. If I'm going to do this, you know, as a job, I want to be the best at it that I can. And, and since then, you know, we, we really targeted fish that are not commonly bred. And now most of the more basic types, we don't breed. We have um, local uh, people that we're friends with that breed a lot of the, you know, what I would consider bread and butter stuff, you know. I still breed some Venustus because um, I like to grow them up big. People like males, you know, but I don't breed a lot of them, you know. Gotcha. This is another new one that... Um, that's really looking hot. The Azurus Copacromis. Wow. Yeah, see that fish, I don't know how it's coming on camera, but <laughs> in real life, that fish looks like, literally like a, like a painting, like a yeah. glass painting, yeah. like marble. Yeah. It's gorgeous. It's stunning. He's the dominant one in the tank, and even the subdominants on those have great color, which in a tank this big, this is a 200 gallon tank, uh, you'll have, we try to have about, um, you know, three to four feet males and then about, you know, six females to every male. That kind of spreads out the aggression and each one of those males will have a different area in the tank to breed, you know, so. And these vats, these are uh, burial vats, correct? Yeah, the burial these vaults. From, like, they would use, they put a casket, casket there, yep. But essentially they just kind of, they work and they make sense and, yeah, that's awesome. Well, they last forever. Some of these we've had for over, you know, 30 years, so. So this is a new room that, um, you know, it's almost two years old now, but we put in some new tanks. So most of these are for sale. I do have some in here that are um, for future breeders, but let's take a look. Start with the zebra plecos right here. That's a good one. Oh, yeah, zebra yeah. Nice. So um, I don't know if you could get them before he goes underneath the, the slate there. But so these guys are your guys for sale, right? No, these are not. These are going to be our breeders here. Oh, we, nice. uh, We've got more coming in from sell for sale from a friend of mine. Yeah. Um, at Riesel. But, uh, let's see. Those are gorgeous, man. Those aren't small ones either. Those no, are a few inches already. Those I've, are. I've, I've, I've grew them up to this size. When I first got them, they were like an inch, you know? Wow. Is this and those two in here? Or how no, many? I have six. Okay, yeah, but uh, they're hiding, of course. Yeah, I have six. Um, they're in the caves and hiding. Uh, but. That's a super rare fish um, that we're super excited about breeding. You know, uh, we've bre I've bred a lot of hypencistrias before in the past. I've never grown out zebras. I've had them for years and usually just sold them. Um, but now we're ready to start breeding them. I got the space, the tanks. Um, so some redheaded tapos. These are actually for sale. Some two inch, and you know when they're this size, they don't look stunning. But when they get about three four inches they're stunning that's a beautiful fish so people that are in the south americans that like geophagus the red-headed topper top of joes are the one of my favorite this is another geophagus type that's um, super rare these are going to be for future breeders this is the geophagus argostictus and the thing about the um, argostictus is um, only a few people in the u.s have this fish because of the rarity of it very seldom is it ever brought in from the wild. So um, I was lucky enough to get some from a friend of mine that brought them in and actually had success breeding them. So these are F1s. So we're hoping to, to have success breeding these guys. It's gorgeous. And they call this the, oh, the blue lips? Is that the, yeah. the common name? Yeah, the common name would be uh, blue lip. Yeah. yeah. Uh, below us, we have some clown loaches. And the only reason I'm showing these guys off is because we're really proud of our clown loaches being very healthy when we send them out. Like we will uh, sometimes quarantine these guys for over a month before they ever leave our facility. Um, and that is something that, that's a fish that is typically when it's sold, it's not quarantined and treated uh, properly. So a lot of people have health issues with them when they first receive them, but we do a really good job on taking care of those guys. So. Um, there's that male. Uh, oh, wow, okay, this is the male from yeah. we were talking about earlier. That yeah. is gorgeous. Yeah, look at those lips. He, he's, he's old, though. He's, I've had him for a long time, and um, one of my original original males in my breeding stock. He's out here to pasture. Yeah. yeah. Uh, this is a uh, Cuban cichlid. Uh, this is a male that I grew up for pictures, and I've liked the fish so much that we're going to start breeding them because 
they're just really, really nice fish. He's got a lot of personality. Yeah, he does. He doesn't like uh, people being around the, <laughs> the tank. <laughs> but really nice fish. Here we got some fire cracker trophies, some chimbos. <clears throat> really nice trophies, one of my favorites. They're just now starting to get really good color, but um, they're really shy when you first walk up there. You see some of them, like the red, coming in on some of them, for sure. Oh, yeah. Some peacock gun gems. This is another one that we haven't started selling them yet because um, they just haven't looked 100% yet. But uh, we've had them for over a month. They seem to be eating really well now and doing a lot better. So hopefully we'll start, you know, selling some of these. These are um, these would do good with rainbow fish. Um, they come from the same area uh, that a lot of the rainbow fish come from. So. Yeah, it's cool looking fish, it's kind of really unique. Yeah. Oh, these guys are awesome. I've had these before. Pandagars? Yeah, Pandagars are one of my favorites. They're, uh, they're like little uh, mini mouse, you know, or, you know, they're like super energetic. They'll actually climb out of the tank. <laughs> Is that why you guys have the water level marker here? To yes, get low? yes, because they do climb. Great algae cleaner. They don't get very big. Um, so, yeah, we like them a lot. This is a new Tetra. Um, this is the Phoenix Tetra. And this is another one that we've had a long time. When they came in, they were really small. But we have, you know, we grew them up to get good photographs of them. Um, a lot of times when we get small fish in, they don't have any color. We won't sell them until we actually grow them out. Yeah. Make sure they're the right fish. Get a good photograph. Because, you know, uh, if you take a picture of just a little silver fish that has absolutely no color, you know, nobody wants, you know, to buy it. So when you grow the fish out, make sure it's the right fish and it looks like, wow, look at that fish. Then we can show people what they look like, you know, so um, so we like we like doing that. Oh, it makes sense. The win -win. Everybody knows what they're getting. And yeah. So. The Petrocolas, those are uh, Cenodontis Petrocolas. Those guys are really popular. Uh, great fish for the African tanks, you know. This is the bottom cleaners that we recommend. You know, the Cenodontis catfish for African peacock things. Uh, a lot of people like putting the bushy nose or sucker fish in there, but, um, and they have success. So we don't, you know, tell people it's impossible, but, you know, we like having fish that are compatible, you know, to go in there with them. I think long term success is going to be much better when you do that. We got plenty of another tank over here. Over yeah, here. yeah. And then before we talk about this fish, Talk to me about these sponge filters with this kind of side air. So this is just like a sponge filter, right, essentially? Yeah, yeah. So um, basically, um, I'll show you. Actually, they're going to get a little bit riled up. They'll be OK. Um, so we have the um, the air sponge has got a 90 degree elbow with okay. holes drilled in it. So when it pushes the air up, there's holes in the pipe that's pulling everything into the sponge. So, oh, it so it's like a DIY. Okay. Yeah. That's yeah. really cool. Yeah. Uh, we've been using them. You'll see them in our vats too. Bigger, bigger setups like yeah, that. Yeah, yeah. And um, we like it. Uh, first of all, if you have a fish room that's got a lot of tanks, you need to run a, a central air pump if you're going to do it. Because if you had hang on the backs or um, canister filters for 50 tanks, you just see electricity alone when you would be affordable so uh, by having a central air pump like we do for all our rooms uh, we're running one air pump and we're able to run several hundred tanks out of one air pump so what were these fish to be disturbed um, these were the malawi hawks okay. the um, aristochromus christii um, and these are some grow outs that um, we have um, we, we're getting asked to do a lot of predator haps so um, we have a lot growing up and um, that we'll be um, we'll be doing a lot of predator apps in the, in the future. So frontosa, I see. No, those are the um, they look like frontosas, but they stay uh, considerably smaller. But that's the Neo Lampologus um, Trecephalus. Okay, and is it the male? Is it a male and female with the stripes and not striped? Or no, they all get stripes. Okay. Yeah, yeah. So they um, um, some of them are just um, getting their stripes earlier than others, but um, but no, they'll all get stripes. The males will have a little bit more um, blue and collar, but not much. Both of them look really nice. So really nice king and eagle. Yeah, that's the triple red cockatoids and um, the pistos are, we can't keep 
keep them in stock fast enough. They're really popular. People people like their epistogrammas and uh, we're, we're working on a lot of new types of those guys too. So we do a lot of Trophius in this section. There's probably 12 tanks of uh, Trophius here. Um, we got some of the firecracker breeders in that tank. Cherry Spot, Red Saddle, uh, Kaiser II, uh, another firecracker. Bimbos, we got some wild caught <laughs> frontosos, the bimbo, the bimbo. Yeah. You got the sale? No, nah, these are breeders, yeah. yeah. So um, we do have um, quite a bit of, I say quite a bit, we have a couple hundred fly growing up on those guys. So Nadol, Sophius, those guys are really nice. You can see the big um, Grande breeder right there. So we have the nets custom made to, to fit the burial vaults. Yeah. Some yeah. It does. Yeah. Um, I really like it for the fry. You know. Jumpers. And it's a little bit cooler in this room. It's still hot in here, but it's definitely not as hot as the first thing. No, no. Yeah, what are these things? Um, this is a Hypostomus luteus oh. from Uruguay. Yeah, there's one right below us. And right these there. are some that you want to breed eventually, right? Which uh, is like the... Yeah, that's been our breeding project. We really haven't been working with them. We've just been housing them uh, because I have future plans on doing a big tank just for them. So um, I think I have a pretty good idea on how to breed them, but. I need a, a little bit different setup than yeah. what I currently have here. That stuff is awesome, man. This will be really cool, man. I really hope you, I wish you the best of luck with that project. Yeah, yeah. So I know it's something you've been working on for like, you know, a while, right? Yeah, yeah. These fish actually hadn't, I actually went down to South America to learn more about them. So we went to where they come from in the wild and actually collected them and, um, you know, was able to learn about their habitat and um, they come from a big river system. It's a big fish. That's why the top fin on that fish is about eight inches long, you know? So I just need a, a diff, bigger setup with faster current, and I think we could get them to breed. So, awesome. Yeah. What, is, what else is in there? I know some big fish. Yeah, those are peacock, peacock bass. bass. Okay. Yeah, Azul, peacock okay. bass. Yeah. yeah those guys are monsters. A lot of rainbow fish. We actually got some whiptail cats that are breeding in that tank. Those are from Uruguay. Um, a lot of the fry are kept in these tubs um, when we pull the mops. You can see all the little little fry right there. And we feed them green green water when they're small like that. Yeah, green water is pretty much like a food source 24-7, right? Yeah, yep. We actually, in the 2017, we had the hurricane and it did a lot of damage to our building so we've redone most of them but there's still signs of the the old damage from the greenhouse see this guy right here. Yeah. stunning fish right here yeah we actually have so these some of the breeders are the ones you saw in the room yes mm -hmm. okay. we actually have three different types of bosmani growing up so from three different locations so so some of them are some of them more blue and orange, some of them more blue and yellow? Or... Yeah, some have more yellow, some have more blue, some have more red. Um, I mean, they're all found, you know, within 100 miles of each other, I would say. Um, but they're isolated from each other because of the terrain. So there's mountains and, and maybe this creek will have this particular Bozmanai and 30 miles away, another creek will have a, a slightly different Bozmanai. So this is our breeding room. We also have fish for sale in these tanks. Um, a lot of the rainbow fish we keep in here because it's uh, temperature controlled. It's where the greenhouse is, it fluctuates. We still have tons of rainbows in the greenhouse, but this is kind of like a staging area before we sell a lot of the rainbows. So, and the what are these? these guys are jumping out of here. What are these guys right here? Uh, those are the Gorder Rivers. Yeah, that's really nice. A couple of those males have really started to, to get some color. We really like rainbow fish. Um, yeah. That's one reason I went to that trip to uh, New Guinea or Papua. 
to collect new types of rainbow fish. I have a 125 set up. I had uh, Mel Peacocks in it uh, for a long time. And then um, about maybe three months ago, I set it up as a rainbow tank. So now I've got uh, rainbows at home. That is a breeding kit. Mm -hmm. yeah. uh, some albino millenniums. Those guys are... This is like the, um, the red millennium, but they're albinos. So they're like orangish and kind of... Yeah. Yeah, really popular fish um, for all male rainbow tanks. And then the uh, Kamaka dwarf rainbows, those guys are real popular. Really, really like this fish. And it was new to us. Uh, we've been selling it for about six months and we just fell in love with them because just really nice colors. They don't get very big, so just a, a great rainbow. This is a new rainbow and see they don't have much color at this size, but this is a super rare one right here that um, not very many people have in the US yet. It's the price eye rainbow. Where is it from? Um, it's from uh, Papua also. Okay. Yeah, all the rainbows come from the northern Australia and all, all the way into Papua New Guinea and Papua. Uh, there's a big island north of Australia and that's pretty much where all the rainbow fish are, are found. These guys got a little shy when we walked up there, but that's a breeding group of Bolivian rams. Really nice fish, really peaceful fish. And here's a pair of um, some severums, some turquoise severums. Again, they're pretty, pretty shy. You don't have food in your hand. <laughs> um, Are these in a pistol? Yes. Yeah. yeah, that's the triple red cockatoids. Uh, these guys are also going to hide. This is a future breeding group of the buffalo head. Um, those are also real popular. They get a big hump on their head like a flower horn does. Okay. So they look really nice. Uh, this is the uh, Wapagos. You can see a male starting to, to get nice yellow right there in the back. Uh, these came from our friend Gary Lane, who's like world famous for rainbow fish. I've heard that name before, yeah. Uh, we get a lot of rainbows. We've got a lot of his strains going, and um, he's been a lot of help making sure we, you know, have the right names and get good strains of, of rainbow fish. Well, make sure I identify correctly. Yeah. Uh, this is a, these are also real popular, the shell dwellers. Uh, this is the multi Cassiatus. So they have their babies in the um, shells, and that's how they take care of them. You can see some babies hanging out inside the, the caves there. But the shell dwellers are really popular Tanganyikis. Some Blair rainbows. This is another nice one. This this fish is named after Heiko Blair, who's a famous um, explorer for, for fish. Uh, it's another, another really nice rainbow fish. I think you may have more rainbow fish varieties than I've ever seen any one place before, man. Yeah. I mean, I, how many how many different rainbow varieties you can get? At least a dozen. Oh, more. Yeah. <laughs> yeah no, we probably insane. We've probably got 30 types of rainbows. Wow. Yeah. Wow. yeah. Um, some German blue rams. Those are real popular. You see the males popping there in the back. Electric blue rams. This is another new rainbow fish. Um, this is the Upper R River, Upper Catherine River, and it's undescribed, so it just has a location. But um, I don't know how well it's going to show on the camera. But really beautiful fish that's got a lot of purple on it. Yeah, some of the dark ones are really yeah. nice. So we're, we're excited about those guys. This big guy right here. Uh, that's a Demiris, uh, Cyclosoma from Uruguay. Uh, my son Spencer Jack uh, brought these back to us. We actually have a bunch of them and I've actually got him in here for photographs. So okay. I've been letting him settle down and, and working on because a lot of times when you take the fish out to put them in a photograph tank, they lose all their color. So a lot of fish I'll stage in here 
just to let them get their colors back and then I'll take photographs of them in the tank here. Uh, this is another pretty rare fish. See if they're kind of hiding in the back. I think we've got some bigger ones. This is the Herichthys McKinleyi. So this is also a super rare fish. Um, let's see if I've got another. Here's another pair of these. Where are these from? Uh, these are from Mexico and they come from one little area that is threatened um, from environmental issues. So we had a scientist uh, from Texas that did like several years worth of research on this fish and he asked us to breed it to preserve the fish for um, the hobby in case one day they were extinct in the wild that they would be still kept. Yeah, you know? that's awesome, so, man. Yeah. Gorgeous fish too. Oh, they are. Um, I don't have any lights on this tank, unfortunately, it's but big Vegas. yeah, that's the wine Miller Eye. Wow. Those uh, guys, are, you know, they're 10 inches big? Yeah, they're wow. big. Yeah, they're probably close to 10 inches from nose to toe. Um, one day I'll have a light on this tank and really show them for what they are. There's two pairs of discus and we actually were uh, growing them out, hoping they would pair off and they have paired off and you can see eggs on the one slate right there that they're protecting. But what's cool is they paired off with the same pattern because we were a little bit discerned oh, about that. Oh, that's what you say, yeah. yeah. You weren't sure how that was going to work out. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Discus are incredibly hard for us to breed because they require a lot of soft water. And it's hard for us because our water source is very hard. So we have to use, make RO water for the discus, and it takes a lot of RO water to breed discus. This side of the room is um, all done manually. Right? The other side of the room, we have valves underneath each tank. It's probably good to take a look at them yeah. so people could understand what I'm talking about. Uh, so basically, if we wanted to do a 50% uh, water change on this, we have a, a valve that is actually plumbed down to the very bottom of the rack, and all we have to do is turn the valve and drain the tank down. So it's really made water changes. <laughs> so it will drain to this level right there, right? It will drain, drain to that, that standby. Okay. Yeah. And we'll stir things up. There's still some <clears throat> vacuuming that's done, but not nearly as much. So. Yeah. And then you have it all plumbed for the water change in the pocket. Yeah. See that <clears throat> yeah, so this is incoming water, depending on if it's soft or hard water type fish. Uh, we'll pump water. We have a couple different reservoirs where the water's already made up and ready there's 157 ponds total on the property so there's 20 acres and pretty much the entire property is surrounded by ponds so uh, we're getting fresh dirt in right here to repair some of the roads before the rainy season gets here but um, um, but yeah that's where the fish go after we breed them even the rainbow fish the Africans everything goes out to the pond there's only a few fish that do not go to the pond and that would be like the um, the trophius types, for some reason, they don't do well. We put, you know, ponds with, with fry in it and we, we never get very many back. Same thing with the bushy nose plecos. They don't do well in the ponds neither. So uh, so those fish, cherry shrimp is another one. We have a, one greenhouse dedicated to shrimp. Uh, the, the shrimp do not go to the ponds either. Um, so mostly um, rainbow fish, uh, South American, Central American cichlids, um, Africans. All those, once they breed, they, they usually go out with the pond. So that's, so right now it's the end of April. So where are you guys at in terms of, you know, what's going on with the ponds? Is the next step, are you guys gonna bring fish out to the pond soon? Or, you, or is there fish in here right now? Yeah. Those, where, where's, where's the step at? Or yeah, there's fish in there right now. Like right now um, in spring, we're coming out of winter time. So we're trying to turn over as many ponds as we can and set up with fresh babies. So um, that's what you see them, do, how they're doing right now with the pump behind us is they're cleaning out ponds and um, making them ready for a new batch of fish to go out in them. So right now it's the breeding season. We're trying to breed as many as we can because once this coming winter starts, the breeding pretty much stops, you know, um, once it gets cold. So we're very um, dependent on the weather, you know. So when it's hot, fish are breeding. Uh, we do have some breeding rooms that we breed year round in but it's a much better when all these fish in the greenhouses and everywhere it's breeding you know yeah man i'm trying to think i, I mean we kind of hit every it's alligator uh, is it a gator yeah 
that a common occurrence down here? Yeah, yeah. You can see the little one. He's about to go under. Let's see how close he lets us get. Oh, I see him. Oh, yeah, yeah. So do you try to do you try to remove them? Uh, only when they get big. Um, we'll remove them. We have a permit to remove them if they get big. But um, the small guys, they they normally eat crayfish, snakes. Um, you know, and there's quite a few. I mean, I'd say probably ten of them on the property right now. So, yeah. so they don't buy, they don't, they're not going to eat fish too much. I mean, if they get no. too big. Mm -mm. Okay. 